In this video, I'm going to describe ICL surgery. ICL is an acronym for the implantable contact lens. ICL surgery involves placing an implantable contact lens between the natural lens of the eye and the iris, which is the colored part of the eye. ICL surgery is elective and is performed to decrease or eliminate dependence on glasses and contact lenses. While there is no guarantee of 20-20 vision, I'll do my best to get you there with ICL surgery. In the unlikely circumstance that your vision is not as good as you want after ICL, we can adjust it with some additional LASIK. The implantable contact lens is used to treat moderate and high nearsightedness. Lens implant surgery has been done since the 1960s, and the first ICL was implanted in 1991, the same year as the first LASIK. Hundreds of thousands of successful ICL procedures have been performed since then. ICL surgery has been replacing LASIK for many patients in my practice for multiple reasons. The most important reason is that ICL gives a better quality of vision than LASIK surgery. With LASIK, it's man-made vision. We're altering the shape of your corneal surface. With ICL, we're maintaining the normal shape of your corneal surface, which leads to high-definition vision. I look at LASIK as like regular television. I look at ICL as like HDTV. The next benefit of ICL over LASIK is that ICL is reversible. We're adding something to the eye rather than taking it away. In the unusual circumstance that you don't like your vision or vision quality with the ICL, we can reverse the lens. I've not had a single patient in my career where I've had to take out the ICL because they were unhappy with the vision. Because ICL does not involve cutting across corneal nerves, there is no induction of dry eye. Because the quality of vision is better, night vision is better with the ICL than LASIK. The ICL also has an ultraviolet blocker that theoretically decreases the risk of cataract and macular degeneration. The last benefit of ICL over LASIK is that we get more accurate lens calculations at the time of cataract surgery. A cataract is a cloudiness of the lens that occurs as people age, and cataracts occur to everyone. So eventually, everyone, whether they've had ICL or LASIK or no surgery, will need cataract surgery. And because we haven't altered the shape of the corneal surface with ICL, we can more accurately measure the curvature of the cornea that leads to a better calculation at the time of cataract surgery. Prior to ICL surgery, we use a water bath ultrasound to measure the size of the eye and then use a technique that I helped to develop in order to size the lens properly. Most surgeons guess the size of the eye based on the outside of the eye called white to white. We find that in about 30% of cases, this white to white measurement is not accurate in terms of lens sizing. Because of this, we perform an ultrasound on every patient prior to surgery. I've been involved with ICL technology since 1999 as one of the FDA principal investigators for the technology, and I've developed my own proprietary way of performing the ICL called the VistaVision ICL procedure. Most surgeons perform ICL surgery as four separate steps on four different days. With the VistaVision procedure, I perform both eyes on the same day in one step. You're in the surgery suite for 15 to 20 minutes. The procedure itself takes about five minutes per eye. It's performed under eye drop anesthesia without the use of needles. You will be given a relaxing medication through an IV or by mouth prior to the treatment to make you more relaxed during the surgery. During the procedure, you will feel slight pressure but no pain. Next, the eye is filled with a jelly-like material to keep the eye inflated, and the ICL is injected into and unfolded in the front of the eye. A special instrument is then used to place the foot plates of the implantable contact lens under the iris. Next, a small opening in the iris called an iridotomy is created to prevent high pressure in the eye following the surgery. While you will have improved distance vision immediately after ICL surgery, the vision may be blurry and you may see different colors, typically red from the microscope light for the first 24 hours after the procedure. After surgery, you may also experience burning and stinging as the incision heals in the first 24 to 48 hours. Follow up to ICL surgery is the next day, then usually a week or two later with us or your optometrist. In terms of drops, we use an antibiotic, steroid, and non-steroidal drop in the eye for one week after surgery. You'll also be on a pressure drop for the first 24 hours called Alpha-GAN-P. The risks to ICL surgery are low and typically treatable. ICL surgery is less risk than putting a contact lens in your eye. Statistically, with any vision correction procedure, you take twice the risk of losing your vision or losing your eye with a contact lens than you do with a vision correction procedure. In terms of less common risks with the ICL, Theoretically, infection can occur every one to eight to 10,000 ICL surgeries. I've never seen an infection in my practice. Another risk of ICL surgery is cataract formation, which is a cloudiness of the lens that can occur prematurely. In the FDA study, there was a 1.3% rate of premature cataract formation with the ICL. The good news is that everyone who got a cataract was more than minus 13 diopters, or very highly nearsighted, and every patient but one was over age 40. We know that very high prescriptions and older age are independent risk factors for cataract formation. 
There's also a small risk of high pressure in the eye or glaucoma, typically treatable with drops or by using a laser to open the iridotomy. In very rare circumstances, if the pressure stays up, the ICL may be exchanged for another ICL. There's also a small risk of inflammation after the surgery. Another risk with ICL surgery is the need for laser vision correction. If we get your vision close but not perfect, we may need to go back and do LASIK to fine tune your vision. This is done at three months after the ICL surgery and is done at no charge. There's also a risk of glare and halo in low lights after ICL surgery. There's two reasons this might occur. One is if your pupil gets larger than the optic of the lens. The other reason you can get glare and halo is if light gets in through the iridotomy at the top of the eye. This is rare. Astigmatism is where the eye is more curved in one direction than the other that can result in blurred vision for both distance and near. An eye with astigmatism is like a football cut in half. Very steep in one direction, very flat in the other. Astigmatism is not specifically treated by the ICL. Low astigmatism, meaning two diopters or less of astigmatism, can be treated with a small incision in the cornea at the time of the surgery, called a limbal relaxing incision. If you have high astigmatism of two or more diopters, we typically perform LASIK on the eyes one week prior to ICL surgery. If you're not a candidate for LASIK, we'll typically perform PRK four to six weeks after the ICL surgery for high astigmatism. Just like LASIK, it's important that you continue to have regular eye exams for your lifetime. As someone who has nearsightedness, you have an increased risk of glaucoma and retinal detachment unrelated to the ICL. In summary, the VistaVision implantable contact lens procedure is safe and effective for patients with moderate and high levels of nearsightedness. For patients with moderate levels of nearsightedness, ICL is actually better than LASIK because of a better quality of vision, reversibility, and fewer night vision symptoms.